Hey everybody, hope you're having a good day today. We're going to do a, a first for UAP studies and we're going to get to know sort of the UFO uh, and legends and lore according to the Aboriginals and the Native peoples, uh, not only of North America, but around the world have reported this. And uh, one of the more famous gentlemen who's been on TV and willing to speak about this is Avery Tafoya. I know I've seen him on TV a few times, Jay. I think he's fairly new as far as your research yeah, goes. Yeah, I, I haven't uh, I haven't run into... There's a couple of people that you've introduced me to that I did not know about or have not researched, weren't even on my radar. Uh, but Avery Tafoya, uh, you've uh, introduced him to me and he's quite interesting. So I'm looking forward to, to talking with him today for sure. Yeah, we were actually supposed to do this recording a couple of weeks ago, but there was a big snowstorm uh, in New Mexico. Weird. I mean, we're in the Pacific Northwest. It was 18 degrees while it was still winter. And here in New Mexico, the desert, practically, it's uh, a snowstorm. Go figure. So we couldn't do it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he is back today. He's using his phone because he doesn't want to chance his Internet or anything dropping out. He says he, he may have some connection issues, so we hope it's OK. We'll do our best to snip it all together. Again, if there's anything that you folks uh, uh, missed out or couldn't quite understand, you can just contact us. We'll be happy to either put you in touch or answer your question. But um, again, this is an area that's very much like Skinwalker Ranch. I know mm -hmm. with the popularity of the TV show and just the vast array of phenomena, everything from lights, craft, Bigfoot, spirits, cryptids, dogman. Well, I mean, this land, the Hickory Apache Nation, is bordering Utah. So it's in essentially the same part of the world and high strangeness is not limited to just Skinwalker Ranch. That's right. So we're yeah. going to hear it uh, from the source himself. He is a tribal member, former police officer, EMS, a gentleman with a reputation, and somebody speaking on behalf of his people. So he's not uh, he's not the type that's just going to make something up because uh, he does have a status within his tribe. Uh, and it's a first for us. I'm super excited, Jay. Let's see, you know, let's dig into an area where the government hasn't had permission to go and steal everybody's photos and videos because yeah. it is native land. So it's, maybe it's a, find... it's a very interesting spot of land for sure. Like you mentioned, it it's it's further. It's not just Skinwalker Ranch, but it's a wide uh, you know space where this activity is taking place. So that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be good. We're super excited. And uh, with that, we'll be right back with Mr. Avery Tafoya right here on UAP Studies Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of UAP Studies Podcast. My name is Louis Borges. Joining me as always, my best buddy, Mr. Jason Gilmet. On deck, sir. How's it going? Going really well. It's a great day today. Uh, for the first time, we are chatting with somebody who's a member of uh, an indigenous population of people who have had high strangeness for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. We don't know. And I think it's important to tell the story um, and also kind of the the fact that it's not crazy in a lot of, um, you know, Aboriginal people's legends around the world, that this is just something that's accepted. Yes, there are star people. Yes, there are ancestors. What's the big deal? And we're all still debating on, is this real or not? And these folks are like, yeah, it's real. Like, let's move on. So uh, very interesting uh, to have uh, Mr. Avery Tafoy on today. He is a, a tribal council member of the Hickory Apache Nation. Uh, he's also appeared on such shows as UFO Witness and Mysteries Decoded. Uh, today, we're going to talk about all the weird things that have been reported uh, on their land. And again, of note, uh, this is also the home of Archuleta Mesa and the home of the rumored Dulce base, which is supposedly a human alien cooperation that uh, even big name people like John Lear have said, yeah, it exists and there's proof. So uh, it's going to be a great day today. But first, welcome to the show, Mr. Avery Tafoya. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, awesome. Glad to be here. Yeah, glad to have you. I've seen you on TV a bunch of times. I always thought you were a well-spoken guy, very polite, and I like your style. So I thought we got to have him on the show. And uh, but so for those that maybe don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself and also um, the connection between your people and strange phenomena that's gone on for centuries. OK, well, for starters, I'm Avery Tafoya. I'm a full blooded Hickory Apache, also a council member for our Hickory Apache Nation. Uh, lived in Dulce pretty much all my life, went to school in California for four years, came back. Uh, had 
or held various jobs from, you know, a bartender to a fire chief to a police officer to EMS. Uh, so my uh, background and my jobs are is pretty well scattered in different fields. Um, right now, I am a council member with our tribe, our, our nation, and I got a year and a half to go on that. Uh, as far as uh, our connection to, I guess I'll, I'll use the term star people. That's what a lot of the indigenous tribes use. Uh, it, the history goes back, I mean, way back, probably when we were first here. And actually, uh, last year we were out hiking around and we found some petroglyphs and, you know, uh, I had heard that those were there in that area. So we went looking around. It took us a little while to find it. Uh, the funny thing is we were up hiking up on this hill, you know, a good, a good decent sized hill. Uh, once I got phone reception, I called this gentleman. I said, you know, we're in this area. Can you tell us where it's at again? So he tells me we end up walking all the way down the hill right beside the road. It was covered by a big old tree and, but anyway, they had different uh, picture clips, and actually, uh, they had some of what I can only describe as Bigfoot. They they had a oh really a, a creature uh, drawn, and then they would have the big like feet drawn beside it, and there was like four or five of them. And um, I I never got a chance to talk to this other gentleman where he can decipher all that good stuff and. So I, I, I'm kind of curious of what the story is on that. But as far as, uh, you know, the history goes back and, and a lot of this is for a lot of the indigenous tribes in North America, South America, wherever the sightings and the connection with the UFOs, um, UAPs, whatever you want to call them, goes back like since we've been here from way back in the beginning. And a lot of those would be on petroglyphs, as, as you all know. You can go anywhere, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and, and they got petroglyphs of different symbols and stuff. And um, actually back in 2020, <clears throat> excuse me, I went over to the Hopi lands in uh, Arizona and they, they say that's the center of the universe. That's where mankind, I mean, all races originated. And they have this uh, rock, it's carved. They call it a prophecy rock. And it tells the story of how we all came out from underground and branched out and, and how we became to be where we're at today. Uh, and, and the thing that's, extraordinary about that is they have a line where they actually detonated the nuclear bombs. They have it to like a date, the first one, the second one, and there was supposed to be a third one, but it, they never detonated. And I never got the whole story on that. I'm, I'm curious about that though. <laughs> no, that's you know, an ancient, an ancient painting or an ancient petroglyph that had those depictions. Yes, it's carved in a big old rock over in a... Oh, somebody had prophetic visions for sure, eh? Yeah. Uh, Second Mesa, Arizona. And actually, they have one that's called Prophecy Rock, and then they have another one that tells more of their history. And this, this gentleman was telling me, telling me a story that he had took a couple of military guys there. And this gentleman got irate and upset, and he was telling this elder, you know, why why do you have that on the rock? And uh, apparently it was a, a carving. And I guess in the military, that carving meant nuclear. Nuclear, I don't know if you want to say a device or just nuclear. And he said, that's not well known. That's not out in the public. Nobody knows that certain insignia, I guess you would call it. Yeah. So he was upset saying, how did, how do you guys know? Where did you guys get this? And he goes, oh, well, this was carved back hundreds of years ago. They were, they were told by the star people. Wow. So, and the story I was getting to is 
where we were created supposedly over here, that's where the star people were. And along those along those lines, they were saying we were underground all this time. And uh we decided they decided to climb out of the hole under underground and come up to the surface of the earth. And once they did, they branched out and they made all the races. So from what I gather from this elder Hopi man, we're, we were all originated in that area. And when we were underground, they were saying they had at people. Yeah. In the Hickory away, they also tell a story of we were underground also, and that we were with ant people. So ant, I, ant people. Yeah. Ant, you know, like an ant ant. Yeah, a so, bug. Yeah, yeah. That makes me wonder, are those reptilians? Are those... You know, what are they? So I, I never, I'm still divulging into that aspect of that too also. So I, I'm curious if uh, if these beings actually look like ant people, you know, the pinchers, yeah. antennas, everything, you know. Well, but it's uh, been, yeah, it's it's been mentioned a few times, Avery, from, from different experiencers that sometimes some people see these entities almost being bug-like, you know, big black eyes and just very smaller face so it, it seems to be a reoccurring thing that we keep hearing and it, i'm not surprised to hear it that if it's you know it dates back thousands of years and, and stuff that's in you know um, carved into a you know stone pretty much at this point is that there seems to be something to these entities there seems to be something there yeah and you know if it goes back that far it makes you wonder why are they um abducting why are they experimenting you know but how do we know this wasn't going back going right. on back then, you know i mean yeah yeah we don't know if it was so let's talk about some of the um different phenomena that has manifested and i mean it's it, the the array is vast so uh, we have low flying unmarked helicopters that some people have reported we have fast moving lights uh cattle mutilations bigfoot sightings uh, crashed UFOs. I mean, it is the gamut. And before the show, Jason and I were talking even about Skinwalker Ranch, and it's not all that far away. And it's the same type of phenomena that they seem to be reporting. And <clears throat> it gets a lot of popularity because of the TV show and everything else. But it is not limited to there. So let's talk about some of these. Where do you want to start? Avery, helicopters, cattle mutilations? Okay, well, you pretty much summed, them up, summed it up. I was just going to tell everybody, thank you for listening. We'll nah. see you. <laughs> we don't know the specifics. That's why we need you. Do you have, do you know of any uh, specific stories that you've heard? or? Well, you counts? know, uh, it's usually, I'm going to say, around spring to fall, we see a lot of our unmarked military activity, meaning helicopters, uh, planes. And specifically in um, September, okay, That's we have we have a a celebration that takes place outside of Dulce, and it's like a I'm gonna say about a 15 mile drive, and it's a uh, related to our traditions and cultures. We're out at a lake. There's no city lights. All that's out there are campfires and uh, lantern lights, and um, I lost my train of thought. Where was I going with that? Okay. City of a festival in September. Okay. Yeah. The and military. Uh, you know, a lot of during that time, I'm going to say like two weeks prior to the middle of September, a lot of people go out and they put up shades and uh, whatnot, their tents and whatnot. And uh, the military flies over that area like constantly. I'm going to say maybe every two hours and they fly so low that you could actually see inside the cockpit. Wow. Why do you um, think that is? What do you think is behind all that? I'm not sure, but a lot of those are C-10 planes. Every once in a while, you'll get the Osprey helicopters with the double blades. Uh, my only guess is they're flying from Colorado to the Air Force Base in Albuquerque. But, you know, uh, it's 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 strange that they would do that at that certain time. But I've also heard stories on Archuleta Mountain where these guys were uh, uh, hiking and out of the blue, 
or I should say the Bush's military guys come out and tell them they can't be in this area. They have to leave. Uh, actually, that I had a friend say that happened to him about a year ago, actually. When we were all on our lockdown during COVID, they were up hiking and they came across, uh, he said a squadron came out of nowhere and told them they had to get off the mountain. Is this... Which is unusual, which is unusual because the mountains uh, is half, some on our reservation, some on Southern U, and some on uh, uh, IBM land or something like that. So, Great, because that's what I was going to ask. Is this like typical to have the military presence on your land and especially guarding, you know, a, a site like this? Like, is this, this seems quite rather uncommon? Yeah, it is, you know, uh, but reports of the military being up there have been there for years. So do you think this uh, helicopters flying around this military activity has anything to do with Dulce base? And the rumors of Dulce base is that it's a multi-level facility where they conduct mind control, genetic experiments. Apparently there's even a cryogenic freezing facility like you would have for genetic work, embryos, that kind of thing. And in 1979, there was a gentleman named Paul Benowitz um, and he was convinced he was picking up electronic or electromagnetic communication somehow and he thought it was a, a crash spacecraft. And then after, uh, you know, doing some investigations, he claims to have discovered a secret UFO base. And uh, in 1990, John Lear confirmed that he had proof of the base itself. So very interesting. What can you tell us about Dulce Base? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of that military stuff going on is tied into that. Uh, we've had reports from members that gone hiking up there and uh, they found vents. So I'm not sure, you know, to what extent. And that's that's one thing I'm doing right now is I'm still looking into the base thingy. There's a lot of reluctancy on some of our members to actually take people to go find those. And, you know, and I can see why they're afraid of that also is because of the military presence. But at the time when... Uh, Mr. Hansen came and we filmed for a UFO witness. We actually did see a heat plume coming out of the mountainside. Uh, so I don't know if that was a vent we might have stumbled upon accidentally, but I'm going to go up and look in that area, actually. And, and the funny thing is, every time I try to go up there, it rains or it, something happens. And that road is pretty treacherous to go up. Or, you know, it gets washed out, you get ruts. So it's like uh, they seem to know when I'm going to go up to go snoop around or something. So they make it but, rain. You know, a lot of that is, I think, because of the military presence. And uh, it's not all the time you see them, but I think they're, they're there somewhere. And I've actually heard from uh, ex police officers they've seen where. It's come out of the mountainside, but not on Archuleta, off to the west. So That's those something. are just things I'm looking into, you know. So they're seeing crafts come out of this um, mesa? Is that correct? Yeah, and I, actually my daughter had actually seen one fly into the mountain. Right. Yeah, uh, I've heard that. It's amazing. Can you imagine seeing a UFO? It looks like it's going to crash, and then it just gets absorbed by the mountain and i think mount shasta has similar reports there's some places in uh, alaska have similar reports of mountains and ufos i don't think anybody really understands but this is not uh, this is not crazy but you mentioned um, police officers and people kind of doing their own work and and cattle mutilations is a big one that seem to occur you know your area skinwalker ranch area and in the 70s there was a gentleman named uh, gabe valdez and he basically came out to a cattle mutilation and his report is crazy, but he claimed to have found a mutilated cow that had a fetus in it, but this wasn't a cow fetus. It was a half monkey and half frog looking creature, almost as if the cow was being used as an incubator of some sort. And uh, even when he made his report, he subsequently claimed that there were like listening devices in his house and people were messing with them and, are you familiar with the story of uh, Gabe Valdez? Yeah. You know, actually, yes, I am, because uh, he used to work with my father. My father was the police chief at that time oh, wow. for our nation. So they did a lot of this uh, 
cattle mutilation investigations. And I, I think when they started, I was around nine, 10, something like that. And I've, I actually used to go with my father when he used to go out to the carcasses and, and uh, Gabe would be there. And, and actually Gabe had sons around our age and a couple of them would be with him. So we all would be sitting in either the state police car or my father's car and watched him do their thing, you know? And uh, the thing about that is that one time they had gathered up this, this herd to check so what they were doing was they were running him through the corral and they had a ultraviolet light on, a black light. And actually there was cows that had markings on them that can only be seen by the black light. So they th theorized that these were marked to get uh, mutilated. But prior to us getting out there, there was actually a helicopter at a distance watching them. And they actually had a, a picture of that. Hmm. And uh, and a lot of that, to Mr. Valdez's theory, is they would pick up the cows, take them somewhere, do their thing, and bring them back and drop them. Which yeah. kind of, you look at the reports, they would have broken bones. You could see, like, harness marks. So I, I kind of believe his theory in that. Now, do you think this is something the military is doing, or do you think this is something that other entities are doing? I honestly think it's the military, um, because if you think about it, why would aliens travel all this far to do that, or do that to us when they're far more advanced than we are? You know, sure. I'm sure there's there's a need for something somewhere because if they're doing it, that's they have to do it that way. Yeah. But as uh, Mr. Valdez said, why would they leave a gas mask? Why would they leave a ballpoint pen mark U.S. government, you know? So yeah. I think uh, a theory that was going around, and I kind of believe this is when they did the, uh, when they put the, uh, they put a bomb in the ground and exploded it, uh, the gas buggy project. And this is on the, on the Western side of our reservation. Mm -hmm. It's like maybe half a mile to our reservation line. They detonated this uh, bomb, nuclear bomb for fracking to get to the gas and oil. What they didn't realize is it contaminated the gas and oil and the water under the ground so they couldn't use it. So what I'm thinking is maybe some of the uh, mutilations are because they're checking the, the cattle to see if they got any radioactivity in it. Right. Yeah. Now, the, the uh, cattle mutilations and questions, because usually, you know, for like the new people to this subject that are not too familiar with the cattle mutilations, usually a farmer uh, or somebody who owns, you know, livestock will find an animal dead and usually under really weird circumstances. Sometimes the eyes are removed, the brain is removed, a uh, piece of the ear, um, no genitals, blood. no blood, genitals removed. Uh, and perfectly, uh, you know, laser precision cuts, and there's no bloods, no evidence of any struggle from the animal whatsoever. And then it's as if the animal is dropped from an elevation uh, back onto the ground, uh, and it's found this way. And what's really fascinating about it, too, is that um, animals won't come and eat from the dead animal. Ants and bugs won't have anything to do with it either. So it's like this really weird phenomenon that's happening to these cows so if it is military they're using something really potent to prevent other animals from even wanting to eat the carcass of of a dead cow uh, is this the state that these animals that you guys have found on the land is is that kind of what we're we're talking about yeah i mean uh it, it, that was very unusual the coyotes usually get to it uh the crows the birds uh mountain lions Whatever's out there will, will eat this. Yeah. But they won't come near it. They, they, you know, that's really the strange thing about this. Is they won't come near it at all. They won't touch it. Yeah. It's as if it's nature unusual. itself is opposed to it. Yeah. 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 
So let's talk about some craft now. And obviously UFOs are uh, a big prevalent thing that's happening. In fact, one of the elders of your uh, your people, a lady named Geraldine Julian, she's been very outspoken. She was on the episode with uh, Ben Hansen and yourself as well. And I mean, this lady's awesome. Not scared to speak out. She looks like she's about four foot nine, but you wouldn't want to make her mad. And I mean, she flat out said she's seen like a huge spaceship over her house, flat on the bottom, domed on top. Um, other people have claimed that they photographed them. And, you know, the there's no lack of UFO evidence in and amongst your people. So anything interesting or any stories you could share with us regarding actual UFO sightings? Well, you know, Geraldine, I, I actually had a lot of time to sit with her. And, uh, you know, God blessed her. So unfortunately, she passed about a month ago. Uh, and she takes all that knowledge with her all the sightings she's seen, all the stories, but uh, she was telling us this one time that she actually seen something also come out of Archidata Mountain. A big old bright light. And, uh, I think she describes it in that episode. Uh, they said that uh, they would come visit her. Uh, so I think a lot of what was going on with her is uh, it goes back way back from when she was young. So I think it was a, like a connection thing. Um, you know, you can talk, you can come to Dulce and talk to anybody. They probably can show you a video or a picture of some strange light. And uh, I'd say in January, there was a lot of activity. A lot of people were texting me and sending me pictures saying, look at this light, look at, you know, it's it was doing this, it was doing that. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. One night I actually went out, I just went out for a ride and we can drive about five miles and we're out into the, the woods, either direction from Dulce. So I went out about 10 miles and, and just parked. And what, the weird thing is when I wrote my window down, something flew over my ride. Wow. I'm going to say maybe 100 yards, maybe less. Uh, I couldn't tell you exactly what it was, but it had a like red and like blue LED lights. They were really bright. No engine noise, no nothing. It just quietly flew over my ride, and I was trying to get a picture, but by the time I got my phone out and everything, you could just see the back end of a red light going in the distance. So I honestly don't know what that was, if it was military or, you know, a UFO, uh, which is kind of strange because uh, I honestly didn't think anything. I just figured I'd go for a ride and kind of scope out the skies and I wasn't uh, prepared to see that actually. And it, it flew right over me. So they knew I was there and I, I tried turning around and driving down the road and Try to get a better view, but it, it was gone. I I lost that, and, and I actually had one of our our fish and game officers actually tell me one night he was parked at this one lake and something flew over him. He said it had a green lights, the shape of a stop sign, hmm. and he said it it basically flew on top of the road or along the highway, so he was able to try to catch up and drive to, to catch it and he said he followed it for about seven miles and it, it just flew off but the weird thing about this is I think that was a military because when we were out at our uh, our celebration out at the lake I'm going to say about 2 30 in the morning we could hear like a, a plane or something coming so we all got out from our shade area or camping and stood outside and we saw this uh, two planes fly over is what I would think they are. But the second plane had the green lights with the stop sign. Mm. So I'm thinking what that officer saw was a military. And uh, Avery, just so I, uh, I could get this clear image, is it normal or typical for planes to fly that <laughs> low to that site? 
like on average, like every year, or is this just something that it's not normal for planes to fly that low to the ground, but they seem to be doing it at this specific time of year? No, it's not normal. Okay. It's not at all, at all. Okay. Yeah, in aviation, Monday. height is your friend. I have a friend who's a pilot, and I, I said, like, because I hate flying. I, I traveled for about three or four years of my life. I've flown 300 times. I still hate it. And uh, he was telling me all the different things about it. And uh, basically, he was saying that, um, oh, shit, I just lost my train of thought. Just <laughs> about flying. Uh, it's not typical low flight. Yes. Yeah. So the whole idea of flying, because I said, why do you got to fly at 40,000 feet? There's no small accidents. And he said, no, no, elevation is your friend. If something goes wrong, pilot has time to fix it. They can, you know, even if the if it stalls or whatever, you need that elevation to be able to drop the plane, bring it back in. The most dangerous way to fly is 300 feet over the ground. Something happens, you're you're done. So, um, yeah. So it, it is. It doesn't seem like it would make a lot of good sense for aircraft to be that low ever, let alone in over over like native land, which they probably have no business being over in the first place. Very strange. Well, you know, they they even fly that low over Dulce, the town. Oh, really? You know, yeah. I mean, that, that's that's the thing that scares me because, like you said, you need the attitude. Or, the altitude yeah. to correct your problem. And if you're flying that low and something happens, you're going to crash into Yeah, exactly. Nowhere to go. Now, do you think this has to do with the land itself, the topography? Because the mesas seem to pop up in a lot of different areas that have anomalous things. Even Skinwalker Ranch. I mean, the biggest area of what's going on is the mesa. So do you think the land itself might have anything to do with this? You know, it might. It might. Maybe there's some kind of mag magnetic draw or something that's drawing these crafts and uh, phenomena that's going on. Yeah. And just just for the uh, listener, because I just learned recently what a mesa is, because it's not common. Like here in British Columbia, we got mountains, but we don't have mesas. And I know other landscapes across the world are not really typical with mesas. Can we explain to the uh, uh, listeners and the audience what a mesa is so they have a better understanding of, of what, you know, if there is a military uh, operation going on, what what does that involve? Well, it's it's a mountain basically, with just a flat top. The top of the mountain is just flat, and uh, there'll be like rock draws pretty much all the way around. Nice. And so, how much of those occupy the landscape uh, where where you guys are located? Oh, it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I think and they're the formed from erosion or something, right? Water, or wind erosion. Yeah. yeah, that's basically what it's from. Yeah. So I picture the Grand Canyon. I mean, that's a, the biggest example of it. But, you know, you have what was there and then it's all bored around of what erosion has removed and you're left with the Mesa, right? Yes. Yes. The Great Ice Age did a number on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. So for uh, so we have that, we you know, it, activity that's taken place over quite a large um, landscape. I mean, this is uh, going across a couple of uh, at least two states, as far as I know, right? Utah and um, uh, New Mexico. Me New Mexico. So with that, have you heard anybody say, you know, with interactions with entities? I know, you know, Bigfoot. Avery, we've been uh, discovering this this subject more and more, and I was not a big advocate of Bigfoot before. I, I, I always thought that that was something silly. Of course, UFOs are real, but Bigfoots are silly. And I'm starting to understand that the two are correlated to, together. But have you had any stories of people having en encounters with either Bigfoot or other entities like uh, alien abductions or anything like that taking place on um, you know the landscape or, or, or people that you know? Yeah, I, I personally know quite a few where they say they were taken, uh, taken away from their house, uh, and then when they come to, they're in a room. It's all white. There's tables, obviously, and other people in there. Uh, I had a friend tell me that after he had what could only be described as an abduction, he had a, a triangle three dots on his inner thigh. Um, he said he don't know how he got that, but he uh, faintly remembers a white room laying on the table and there was other people in the room. Um, uh, 
I've also had people say they were uh, parked, stopped to use the restroom, and all of a sudden this bright light comes on over them. The vehicle dies. It won't start. Uh, and it won't start till after this UFO or UAP disappears or flies off. Um, there's, you know, just numerous, a lot of stories like that. And, and like I said, we're out in the wilderness. So when you're parked out in the middle of nowhere or using the restroom and this happens, it's, it's quite an experience. Yeah. And in the world of Bigfoot, you have a few different schools. You have those who don't believe it exists, those who believe it's a flesh and blood animal that's just so few in number and so intelligent that they stay away or they're hard to get evidence of. And then you have people that say, no, there are they are some type of a galactic being that they manifest here, but they're not actually living here and it's not flesh and blood animals. So what are your thoughts on Bigfoot? Or Bigfoot? What actually do you think it is? I see it more as like a spiritual creature, um, but there's that fine line there. You got footprints, you sure. got hair, uh, and then on the other side, if you go spiritual, they say they can disappear, um, blend in. You know, you could walk by them and you wouldn't see them. So. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Um, I'd say it's a more spiritual, but at the same time, I'm kind of stuck in it being a physical because it's leaving footprints, it's leaving scat, it's leaving hair, you know, yeah. uh, animals that they've obviously eaten, uh, bone marrows where they break the front or back legs and take up the the marrow out of the bones. I mean, a bear can't do that. Yeah. A mountain lion can't do that. So it's just uh, it's just one of those things. And I've actually had at least five encounters. Starting from when I was a youngster, we we have coming up. Uh, the females have a coming of age feast, and we all go camp out. We help. We cook out there and everything and as kids we get to go around the hillsides and get out of working so one time we were doing that and we seen this we thought it was one of the uncles and it was a uh, all it could be described as a, a big somebody dark we thought they were all wearing black and they actually walked around the bushes that we weren't too far from so we go run in that direction thinking we we're going to see somebody there was nobody there <laughs> excuse me we go back to the camp and we asked them you know was so-and-so uncle grandpa somebody up there and they, they told us no everybody was down here working second time we were driving and something ran across the road so we stopped and i think this was a juvenile because uh it wasn't as big and bulky but it ran up this hill that was pretty steep like nothing we got and ran about 20 yards and it was too tough to run up too steep so yeah the third time i'm gonna say about 100 yards it was it was peeking at me from behind a tree big black jet black hair uh, i'm gonna say about maybe seven feet uh, I'm going to say this one was a male. I didn't see no breasts, no anything like that. I, I could see half of his body as, as plain as day. Um, we had went out the night before and we had heard, we could smell it. And we could hear something walking around, but we couldn't see anything. So the next morning I went out to that same area, same place. Um, I forgot my phone. And halfway to that place, I was debating turning around, going to get it and come back. But I thought I have a binocular. So uh, the sun was over the mountain. So I was facing the sun. I look up on the hillside and I just see this huge creature peeking at me from behind a tree. I take my glasses off, rub my eyes, put them back on. It's still there. So I know I saw something. Um, I thought, hey, I got binoculars. I opened my back door and the light reflected the sunlight. I think it freaked it out. And all I could see when I put my binoculars up was it fading into the, the bushes. 
And uh, the next few times, there's just a there's just Ben as you come into Dulce. It's an open field. You got uh, mountains on both sides, kind of like a draw. I seen this. At first, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was like a tree stump. But I, I've driven that area hundreds of times, and I know there is no tree stump. This was squatted down, like almost sitting. It had the, the hair was like dreads. I mean, I was driving by. It was kind of raining, so I couldn't stop. There was rides behind me. But I'm looking at this because you could just see right off the road. So I'd go down the road, I turn around, I come back and I pull into the driveway where this trailer was. It was up on the hill. It was just sitting there. Uh, and I, it didn't dawn on me to whip out my phone to take a picture. I was just kind of stunned. And, and then I, I laughed and I figured I'll come back tomorrow. I went to the same spot that was not there. Hmm. About a month later, it was higher up, but I could see it. Same thing, same color, dreads, you know, and so uh, probably here in about a couple of weeks, I'm going to that area to put some cameras up and see if I catch anything. Because I've seen that there about four times so far. And this is just right off the road. That's crazy that it's that close to civilization that it just doesn't care if it's spotted or not. Yeah, you know, lately, that, they, they've been pretty brave. Yeah, I, bold. I got to to say, yeah, they, yeah, they're like, they don't care now. Yeah. And Avery, what about cryptids? Uh, is there uh, any events that's been taking place, as far as you know, around you with, with cryptids? I know it's very popular with the Skin Rock Ranch. Uh, they're seeing a lot of weird animals and, and strange entities sometimes. Does that happen at all uh, in your neck of the woods? Yeah, you know, they do see strange stuff. I, I Actually, uh, my daughter had seen something as can only be described as a skinwalker but it was a it looked like a horse and uh she had seen it in the field and it was uh standing and when she looked back on it it was crawling on all fours like an army crawl oh really but uh, it's as large as a horse yeah well, that's kind of freaky yeah had a horse body basically yeah, I know the Dogman is a popular one out there. Some people have set up trail cam, and I think I saw it on a documentary somewhere, but there was no actual picture of the quote-unquote Dogman. But in the first slide, it's perfect snowy ground. There's no prints. And then all of a sudden, these wolf tracks appear in the next capture from the uh, the cam because they're motion-activated. But there was never a wolf or any animal associated with the print. It's like one minute, there was nothing, and then there was wolf prints, so... Oddly enough, that seemed to have uh, come out of nowhere. All okay. right, hit record again, Jay. We're still good. Yeah, you know, uh, that that is weird. Me, myself, I, I do look into these things, but I, I for me, I don't really touch the skinwalker stuff because that's more of a, a, a tradition culture thing among yeah. us indigenous people. It, they say it's a, it can bring bad luck. It can... Uh, come visit you it could yeah. go on to your family members so uh, i'll i'll listen to stories about it and that but i i myself will not go out to go look for that yeah well we were uh talking with george knapp and comb um kelleher and um uh thomas winterton from uh, the skinwalker ranch and that's what they're saying is that sometimes they bring home something with them and it, it affects not only them but it affects their family as well like whatever it is that is the hitchhiker effect seems to be a legit thing. Like it's actually happening to a lot of people. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I don't blame you. I would stay out of that myself. <laughs> you know, I, I'd rather do the, the UFO thing and the Bigfoot thingy. And, and, you know, I know we're talking about the skinwalker now, but I, I had my own experience when I was a young child, about five years old. I actually had this Oh, Avery, there's a seems to be some issues with the audio. Yeah, it's very garbled right now. Okay. That's Perfect. better. That's, That's better. better. Yeah. Okay, yeah. When I was I was small, I had a a, a being come visit me. And and the strange thing about this is it was when we landed on the moon in uh, 1969. 
I, I did research on it and I nailed it to that specific day date that when we landed on the moon. We were having a, a celebration in the summer and uh, everybody was out of the house. I was taking a nap on the couch and my brothers were out back. And I went to go use the restroom. I walked by the door in one of the rooms and I see something on the corner of my eye. Uh, so I thought, you know, I'm there's nobody in here, it's just me. So I walk back, I look in that room and I see this bluish colored being. It wasn't the almond-shaped eyes, ET. It, it had like a bluish glow to it. It actually had what I think was a, a suit on, like a one piece. I didn't see no digits. All I saw was what looked like a mittens, the hands. Okay. Uh, it had like a little slit for the mouth and probably had a nose, but I'm, I'm, I was smaller than this being, so I'm kind of looking up at it. <clears throat> I freak out. My mind can't comprehend what I'm seeing. So I, I run out of the room. I run outside the front door, screaming my head off. Uh, by then, I'm pretty sure my brothers and them can hear me screaming my head off in the back. I see my mom and them walking up the road, and pretty soon they're in a full, full out uh, sprint to the house. And for some reason, I run back into the house. I run back into that same room. It's still there. But this time, I notice what looks like a pod behind it. Uh, I'm not sure if we communicated in any way, which I'm pretty sure we did, because we stood there looking at each other. So then I ran out of the house a second time. When I ran out, out of the house the second time, I look up, and the pod was shooting up into a, a bigger beautiful. Hmm. Um, in, in our culture, in our traditional ways, when something unusual happens, uh, out of the ordinary, we seek a shaman, a medicine man. So we had this guy come and he did a ceremony. And uh, all he would tell my father is, I seen something not from this earth. Uh, mind you, I'm about five when this happened. Kind of got tucked away and when I got older in high school. I started looking into it. This is how I found out it was the same neighborhood. Walked over there, basically. Uh, I asked my mom one time how oh, she would tell me so we could ask my mom what she saw, but I'm not going to say it. So, uh, if I've always wanted to do hypnosis, hypnosis the AMC, uh, I still might do that. It's no, no doubt in my mind. I, I had yeah so uh basically we're just going to wrap it up here i think we're having some audio technical difficulties there on your end it's, yeah, it's like, very garbled very it's garbled impossible there. to hear anything at this point okay. it might be your hand on the microphone of the phone perhaps like if you're holding it like this it might be your hand doing that with the phone yeah. I'm holding it on the side. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, so maybe it's just a, the reception then. That's okay, though. We got most of it done pretty good here, I think. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. good. So we'll say, Avery, where can people find more information about you, your people? If they want to know more, where can they uh, find out more? The internet. <laughs> the internet, yeah. Leave me alone. Check the internet. <laughs> yeah, you know, look up Hickory Apache Nation. It'll come up uh, on Facebook. I'm pretty sure it will come up on the name. It'll come up on the Sure. Okay. Perfect, Avery. We thank you so much for joining us today on UAP Studies. It means a lot. Um, let's do this again. Uh, we'll yeah, figure if out you a get way anything to... on your trail cam footage, Bigfoot-wise, we're not. A, I don't think we've ever done a Bigfoot episode. We're mainly UFOs, but there is a connection. If you find anything amazing, you let me know. Let Jason know. And we'll definitely do another show on it. We sure will. Uh, I'm actually going to go put out all the cameras I have. I got my places picked and I'm going to leave them up there for like three months and see what I get. See what happens. Nice. Perfect, Avery. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.